Welcome, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number 5 on logical engineering for smarter knowledge graphs. In this section of the lecture, I'm going to talk to tell you how to design better ontologies. So you know already about ontology design process and ontology development process. There is no that such thing as, let's say, the single true and unique way to define an ontology. Defining ontologies always depends on what exactly you have in mind with your application that needs the ontology. So what's the purpose? Why am I using that? And what exactly am I using it for? And this in the end determines the structure and also, let's say, the expressivity of your ontology. Which means for the same domain there might exist multiple ontologies, but they are all then meant for different purposes if they are really different. Okay, however, the question of course is how then do we judge the quality of an ontology and how do we compare these? First of all, what you have to keep in mind, ontologies are not the reality, as I just told you. Ontologies are a context-dependent projection, which means they are a model of the reality. In the sense that you leave out things and take away things from reality that you don't need, because that would be simply overhead. On the other hand, ontologies are just engineering artifacts. So therefore, reality is changing. An engineering artifact also has to adapt, for example. The other thing is ontologies are shared among different components for potentially different tasks. So they are, might be well fitted for one of them and might be not so well fitted for another one. Also, ontologies might be reused in ways that you didn't anticipate, so in an unexpected way. <laughs> and then it also might be that your ontology might be subject of change. And ontologies are used to integrate usually heterogeneous data sources. So for that, they are really an important tool that you have to keep in mind. And of course, data integration is a specific purpose and not all ontologies are really well suited for exactly that task. In the end, evaluation of ontologies is really necessary, but because of all of these reasons, not so simple. Let's have a closer look on ontology evaluation. Ontology evaluation in general can be defined as the process of deciding about the quality of an ontology, so we already stated that. But we need some criteria you know, so with respect to a particular criterion, with a view of determining which in a collection of ontologies would suit best for a specific purpose. So we have always the purpose and, you know, how we are going to use the ontology, what's the intended purpose of that, we have to have that in mind. So what's the goal of evaluation? We want to compare the ontology if possible with specification requirements. So we need requirements against which we can compare them. You might remember we have things like so-called competency questions and they are already specification requirements because competency questions, if you remember correctly, they were meant to be solvable or resolvable with the help of the ontology. So they should be answered with the ontology. Or if available gold standards would be even better. Okay, by taking into account, of course, evaluation criteria, we will look at them and applying various evaluation approaches. We will also look at that. And in the end, there will be yielding evaluation results and advices on how to improve the ontology. So that's, of course, the purpose of evaluation. You will find out, of course, that there might be some flaws in your ontology, but you should also then know, yeah, what do I have to do to improve that? And this is, of course, a rather difficult task and endeavor. We have to differentiate between two things. There is ontology verification and ontology val validation. Let's first look at verification. That's the more, let's say, the easier task of both. What does verification do? It checks the encoding of the specification, which means it tries to detect errors. For example, if you have defined circular class hierarchies that are going in circles because the hierarchy is not straightforward but has an arc that leads back to us. Um, there might be redundant axioms that you don't need or inconsistent naming schemes and stuff like that. So this is easily detectable and then of course you can also improve these errors and resolve them. 
also it confirms that the ontology has been built according to certain specific ontology quality criteria that of course has to be defined and that can be checked then in the verification process. More complicated than this kind of verification is the validation because there we really try to check whether the meaning of all of the definitions that we made matches with the conceptualization of the ontology is meant to specify. So this is really the question, does the ontology really fulfill the purpose for which it was intended? So does this really match or did I make mistakes, conceptual, semantic mistakes in my modeling? The goal there is to show that the world model is compliant with the formal model that I have defined. So verification and validation. If we look again at the context of ontology validation or evaluation, we have here the real world. And from that real world, of course, by generalization, by abstraction, by aggregation, we are building our model, which is an approximate conceptualization of the world. So it's not the real world because we have stripped away everything which we don't need for our specific purpose. And this model, again, has to be evaluated here against the real world. And for that, we will need for the evaluation metrics, we will need methods, and so on. And what we have to calculate here is the distance between the real world and the model. And whether then, of course, it fits for our purpose. OK, let's have a look at the criteria for ontology evaluation. And there are a lot, I confess. So first thing we have to look at is accuracy of our ontology. What does that mean? So we simply ask questions like, do the axioms that we have defined really comply to the expertise of the users of the ontology? So does this fit together? And this also determines how accurate our ontology might be. Or does the ontology capture and represent correctly aspects of the real world? So this is accuracy, very important aspect. But besides accuracy, it's also important because you know, the world is changing. Also, our ontology has to adapt. So therefore, adaptability is a really important issue. So next criterion in ontology evaluation is adaptability. Does the ontology offer the conceptual foundation for a range of anticipated ta tasks? So this is what you have to ask. Of course, you might not be able really to think of all the tasks. There might be unexpected tasks, but at least for those that can be anticipated, you should really foresee whether, of course, your ontology for that reason can be adapted. And can the ontology also be expanded, extended and specialized monotonically? What does that mean? So if I extend the ontology, do I have to remove axioms then? If, then it's not monotonically. Mon monotonically would mean I can add and add and add, but the rest that I have previously defined will stay. And that, of course, would be a good thing. So we have to ask whether this monotonically extension of the ontology is possible so that our new stuff doesn't contradict the stuff that we have already defined. So that would be an important issue for adaptability. Or does the ontology comply with procedures for extension, integration, and adaption? So did I really see during my design process that the parts of my ontology are created in a way that they can be extended, that they can be integrated into other ontologies, and that they can be adapted if necessary. So for that, you have to provide according uh, respective means. So let's proceed. So we had accuracy, adaptability, clarity. What does clarity mean? So for the reason of clarity, we have to ask questions like, does the ontology communicate eff effectively the intended meaning of the defined term? So is, does, does it have really a, a good documentation that suits its purpose? Are the definitions that are made objective and independent of context? So it would be really hard if you define an ontology that is clearly biased. So you have to be objective. And also you should see if your ontology should hold for multiple contexts, then it should be independent of a specific context. That's quite clear. If your ontology is meant for a specific context, then of course take respect of that context. That's important. Next thing, does the ontology use definitions or partial descriptions? If so, 
they have to be clearly documented. So are the definitions documented? Which means in the end we have to check whether the ontology really can be understood. Is it understandable? So there should be people looking at it who were not involved in the design. So this is really important then for the evaluation process. Let others use your ontology and see what happens and then you see whether you did everything correctly and whether clarity was fulfilled or not. Next point would be completeness. That's a difficult thing. So the question is, is the domain of interest appropriately covered? It depends again on your purpose. If you want to cover an entire domain, it might be a huge ontology and it might really be difficult to cover every single aspect of a complete domain. If you have a specific purpose in mind, of course, you can then get rid of specific aspects and details of the domain that are not involved in your respective task. So it always is task dependent. What exactly is the purpose of your ontology to determine about the completeness. For that you have defined competency questions and you have to ask are competency questions defined first of course and can the ontology answer them. If there are questions that cannot be answered by your ontology it's a clear sign of course that the ontology is incomplete. And another thing that goes in line with that does the ontology include all relevant concepts and their lexical representations. If not then probably also not all competency questions might be answered. Let's continue our quest for criteria for ontology evaluation. So next thing would be computational efficiency. How easily and successfully can reasoners process the ontology? So there are examples of ontologies which are rather precise and also highly used. So there is for example the CDOC CRM standard in the humanities or for museums for example, for history. This one, for example, has problems with reasoners because what you express there is often rather lengthy and not really efficient because it takes a while until you get, for example, to the name of a thing and to compare that then with other names of things. So this would be then somehow you, you do query and you ask for query complexity, for example, according to that. And also then reasoning, if you have defined, of course, then in your huge structures, then also uh, lots of, uh, let's say, rules or constraints, and then it might be difficult for reasoners to pro process that. So you have to check that. That's computational efficiency. The question is there, how fast can the standard reasoning process like satisfiability, instance classification and so on be applied to the ontology. Conciseness, that's also um, related to what I just said. So does the ontology include irrelevant axioms, axioms that you don't need? Of course, you can also find out about that with your competency questions. If this axiom that you have defined is never covered or by one of the competency questions, then you have to ask yourself, was it really necessary that we need this axiom? Does the ontology specify the weakest theory possible and define only the essential terms? So then it would be concise. Again, difficult question. But on the other hand, how weak are the assumptions regarding the ontology's underlying philosophical theory about reality. So these are difficult questions and of course you have to be an educated person, especially on ontology design as well as in philosophical theory to answer exactly for that. We are almost done. Next thing would be consistency. So what's consistency? We ask there do the axioms lead to contradictions? So is it logically consistent? That's usually easily tested with the reasoner. Are formal and informal descriptions of the ontology consistent? That's much more difficult. For that, of course, you have to see or to read it again and again whether your informal description that you have given in natural language really is consistent, so is exactly the same like your formal definition. And are any representation choices made purely on the convenience of notation or implementation? As well as does the translation from the knowledge level to the encoding show a minimal encoding bias. So there should be, in the ideal case, no encoding bias. If you are choosing a specific encoding and for that then are changing or have to make compromises in what you can express in your ontology that 
might be a bad thing, but of course, again, this depends on the purpose. Is the uh, ontology still able to fulfill exactly that purpose in an objective way? Or does the bias that has been introduced via the encoding influence the ontology? So this is something you have to ask yourself. And in the end, there is also organizational fitness, which means is the ontology easily deployed within the organization? So does everybody accept the ontology? Do tools within the organization put constraints on the ontology that it cannot be used or that only parts can be used? Or are there any legal requirements which might be violated? So does the ontology meet all legal requirements in an organization? So these are all criteria for ontology evaluation. The direct measurement of all of these mentioned criteria, for some it's more easier, for others it's really difficult. So what you are looking for usually first one is ontology correctness and then ontology quality. How do we do that? Let's first have a look at accuracy. What you do there usually is you try to measure precision. Like for example, you are checking the total number of correctly found over whole knowledge defined in ontology and recall the total number cor of correctly found overall knowledge that should be found. Completeness, we already have talked about that. So you can check whether, of course, um, or you can check via the coverage of encoded axioms and axioms in your specification. Consistency, what you can do there is count the terms with inconsistent meaning. And of course, then the more terms there are there, the f uh, weaker is your consistency. Then let's look at the ontology quality, so um, computational efficiency. We can simply look at the size and the length of paths if you try to access specific information via that ontology. Or adaptability, so you look there, at, uh, for example, via coupling. So you want to see what's the number of external class references that I have in my ontology. Or cohesion, which means you look at the number of root, leaf, nodes, uh, average uh, distances or average inheritance death and stuff and stuff like that. For clarity, it's clear <laughs> you could see how ambiguous your, uh, your descriptions, your documentation is. So look at the number of word senses. So that might be interesting. And to yeah, finally come to a conclusion with our ontology evaluation, we have to look at several aspects, of course, and these aspects describe choices, so not necessities, that are being made during ontology design time. So you have to look at your vocabulary, what vocabularies are you using, so that's the set of all of your names. You have to take care of your syntax, so there are different versions of serializations you might, of course, take into account. So are you using turtle, are you using entriple? So I would always recommend go for turtle first because this is something you can easily understand. And also, um, don't neglect the possibilities that you have with vis visualizing your ontology. So there are nice tools out there by which you can visualize, of course, then how classes are connected with each other. And, and they are rather helpful often to get a better overview of what you are doing there. Then we have to look at the structure. So look at the structure of the underlying RDF graph. And of course, this can largely vary also. I mean, it's the same. It's representing exactly the same semantics depending on who exactly did this kind of structuring. Then semantics is another aspect of ontology evaluation. Of course, an ontology describes something which is a non-empty infinite set of possible models that is characterized by semantics. So of course, the same semantic can be expressed in complete different way with your ontology. So therefore, comparison, sometimes it's really hard. Representation, the next aspect then simply tells you about the relation between structure that we have there and the semantics. So how well is your representation chosen? And you have to look at context, which means in how far is the ontology different from other things around it? Like for example, an app that uses it or data sources that it describes or rules that are using it. So these are aspects that have to be taken into consideration for ontology evaluation. And as you have seen, this is a lot of things to consider. And it's not so easy to build a good ontology. And therefore, we are then focusing in the next part of the lecture on ontological engineering.